Welcome. This is Quick Mortgaging Out, video tutorial number one. My name is Jeffrey Smith. What is mortgaging out? The phrase mortgaging out refers to obtaining a loan secured by real property with a mortgage or deed of trust, and the borrower receives cash out when the loan is funded. The buyer is paid to buy the property. This is the cash out leveraged buyout for real estate. There are many shapes of mortgaging out. This tutorial describes one of those shapes. You are paid to buy income property, so you have no constraints on raising cash for your down payment. Buy the property on a short term wraparound note, then refinance with cash out. This method works only for high equity properties, usually owned for a long time by older sellers, because the new financing must fully redeem all existing debt. Financially illiterate heirs of unencumbered properties may also be receptive to this technique of a big lump sum tax-free because of the stepped-up tax basis and steady cash flow over 5 to 10 years, maybe longer. For example, you offer to buy a property for the effective purchase price $1 million, that is the asset acquisition cost, with a senior loan from a bank and a junior seller financing note. You borrow $1,125,000 structured as a bank loan for $625,000 cash plus $500,000 on a seller financing note. At closing, $500,000 cash from the bank loan goes to the seller plus the $500,000 junior note, which is the $1 million effective purchase price. There is $125,000 remaining on the closing table, which goes to you tax-free because it is the proceeds from a loan. The cash to the seller must clear all existing debt. The bank loan new lien is recorded in first position. The key to making this succeed is that your offer of $1 million is about 20% less than the asset market value. The property capitalized property value, CPV, is $1,250,000 on the open market. But the motivated seller needs cash now and is willing to discount the price and agree to carry at least half of the CPV as a junior note. The bank loan is 50% loan to value LTV relative to the capitalized property value CPV, which is within the loan limits for hard money and private lenders. You have instant built in equity of $250,000 equaling 20% times $1,250,000 added to your net worth $125,000 in cash and the rest in equity. Steady tax sheltered net cash flow and no cash invested. Capital stack before refinance. You negotiated a discount of $250,000. There remains debt or equity up to $500,000 plus equity. $500,000. This is your effective purchase price, $1 million. The net equity when you buy the property is $250,000. You bought it with a wrap note of $500,000 and a seller note of $500,000. The sum total of these tranches is the capitalized property value of $1,250,000. The capital stack after the refinance. Retained equity, $125,000. Bank note, $625,000 cash loan. Seller note, $500,000. The total of these tranches is the capitalized property value, $1,250,000.
you will receive cash out $125,000. The seller receives cash $500,000. And the seller receives a note $500,000. The seller cash plus the seller carry equals the effective purchase price of $1 million. The Quick Mortgage Out XLSM spreadsheet has dynamic mail merge templates that can quickly generate reports and letters and then save PDF files for emailing. You can vary the spreadsheet debt coverage ratio DCR, the senior loan parameters from your private financier, and the cash out to you to determine the best financial structure for the transaction. The spreadsheet can help you to run various what if calculations to determine the financial fit for your needs. I suggest starting at 50% or less loan to value LTV for the bank loan because that will minimize the lender qualifying you. The property will be the sole recourse to the lender for default. Your strong debt coverage ratio DCR built into your calculations will provide protection against recessionary pressure on income and expense. By the way, do not blow that cash out on consumer junk. Use it for property improvements or acquiring more streams of passive income or paying off your toxic consumer debt. Property wholesalers often try to negotiate an all-cash purchase price of 65% less repairs and carrying costs of quick sale market value. But few distressed sellers are desperate enough to accept such an extreme discount and walk away with nothing. Your offer looks much more attractive because the seller receives an extra 40% of the higher purchase price in the form of a seller financing note. You can outbid the wholesalers and it works on move-in ready or cosmetic repair properties. While the wholesaler's 65% cash offer is only the starting point for highly distressed properties, the seller often must accept a cash offer of only 40% to 50% of the current value because repairs, carrying costs, and the wholesaler's fee must be deducted from the bid. A distressed seller accepting a 20% discount in exchange for receiving up to 50% of his cash now is easier than accepting a 40% to 50% discount and nothing else. You can safely ignore the distressed properties that need steep discounts to cover the repairs and carrying costs. Focus on the distressed sellers rather than the distressed properties and provide solutions to those sellers. A little bit of hair on the deal is helpful, but not necessary. Cosmetic improvements and minor repairs, cleaning and painting can be funded from your cash out. You want a distressed seller, not a distressed property. Prior to the 1980s, Institutional lenders would commonly allow these kinds of transactions for cash out for new purchases. Now, only private lenders or hard money lenders, which are equity-based lenders, will allow for cash out for new or recent purchases. They allow cash out because their investment has strong protective equity. They will usually lend up to 65% of the property current market value with non-recourse and no due-on-sale clause. You will negotiate with the motivated seller to buy the property at least 20% below the current market value. The difference between what you pay for the property and what the property is worth on the open market is the protective equity that your lender requires. Remember, equity-based lenders care mostly about the protective equity in the property and whether the net operating income, NOI, is sufficient to service the debt with a strong debt coverage ratio. Your credit rating is rarely an issue unless you are a deadbeat who never pays his creditors. You are paid with tax-free money to buy an income property. The tax-sheltered rental income from the tenants will pay the loans and the income tax. Your tenants are creating your wealth and financial freedom. You bought the cash flow with none of your own money or credit. Hard money lenders are often far too expensive for a property purchase to pay for the high double-digit interest rate and points that are charged. Hard money lenders want interest only, non-amortizing, and short term up to about 12 to 24 months. You want the loan for 5 to 10 years. You want some equity accumulation through amortization and you want steady net 
positive cash flow. Keep open the opportunity to resell on a wraparound note by insisting on no due on sale clause. Alternatively, you can resell on lease with option contract or an installment land contract, ILC. On the other hand, private lenders will lend at much lower single digit interest rates, allow amortization, lend relative to the actual value instead of the lower purchase price, and allow medium term, say 5 to 10 years. Quite often, the private lender is funding the loan from a self directed individual retirement account. SDIRA and is happy to generate a steady income stream to the SDIRA for several years. The typical 8% annual interest rate is much higher and more certain than the stock market or bond market. Private lenders can fund as soon as 5 to 10 business days, which is very important for motivated sellers. Always insist on non recourse and no due on sale clause for both tranches. In times of rising mortgage interest rates, the hard money and private lenders fill a specific niche in this model until they start increasing their interest rates. At that time you may be able to refinance out of the hard money or private loan into a lower interest rate that may seem high to other investors. Remember that when 10% money seems too high to those other borrowers, you are refinancing to a conventional loan at 8%. If 10% worked for you, then 8% should also work better for you. The only hard money lenders or private lenders to consider are those that offer non-recourse loans. The asset is the qualification for the loan. By the way, no due on sale clause enables you to flip the property to another investor at reasonable cost for twice the cash out and some cash flow and maturity spread, as the spreadsheet can calculate for you. The low loan-to-value LTV ratio of not more than 50% and very fast funding, not more than 10 days, is the key for this business model. This leveraged buyout business model requires very fast solutions to distressed owners with high equity. You only need a valid purchase contract provided by your real estate attorney with a special financing addendum generated by the spreadsheet and a title commitment from the title company. The title commitment may contain specific exceptions when you are taking title subject to the existing liens. You don't even need an earnest money deposit, EMD, because EMD is not legally required for a valid binding contract. If the broker insists on EMD, then use a 0% interest promissory note for the least amount that you can negotiate, say $10 to $100. The note is redeemed, that is credited against the seller's cash out at closing when the loan is funded. The contract will expire in 15 to 30 days anyway, so a small EMD is acceptable. Never offer a promissory note that you know you cannot redeem, because that is the same as offering a bogus personal check. Your seller is receiving a significant chunk of cash at closing, so insist that the seller pays all of your closing costs, the ultimate nothing down deal. You must search for private lenders because they rarely advertise. You can ask your title company to search the public records for property closings that show a private lien on the property that fits your criteria. Then find the contact information of the lien holder and mail a brochure or letter explaining that you are a real estate investor. When you speak with the prospect, use a script like this. I buy good performing income properties from motivated sellers. I team up with flexible private lenders who can move quickly for a good opportunity. Several good opportunities cross my desk each week, which I offer to my private financiers at a steady 8% annual yield for years, secured by performing cash flowing real estate that is worth at least twice than the investment. Who do you know that would consider an investment like that? Trim the script and create professional business cards. I buy good performing income properties from motivated sellers. I team up with flexible private financiers who want a steady 8% annual yield for years, secured by solid cash flowing real estate that is worth 100% more than the investment. 
Is that the right kind of investment for you? Or this is a good tagline on the back of your business card. Ask me how my private financiers earn steady 8% annual yield for years secured in first lien position by performing cash flowing real estate that is worth at least 100% more than their investment. A short, easy introductory script. I know this is not for you. Who do you know that would like to make 8% annual return on a first position loan for 5 to 10 years that is secured by a performing piece of real estate that is worth twice the investment? You are not approaching them for money, just asking for information. If they respond with interest, then they are approaching you. If they say they have money available, then follow up with how much money are we talking about. They must answer with a specific number and not some vague response like as much as you need for a great deal. Then ask, when can you deliver the funds? They must respond with a few days or not more than one week. You are looking for a private financier that can finance the entire project as a first position lien holder and deliver to escrow the money within seven days. Networking with friends, other investors, and at investor clubs can produce referrals for private lenders. Create a spreadsheet of private lenders with their full contact information and criteria for loans. Size, location, property type, protective equity, yields, amortization term, etc. You can use Excel filtering to find lenders that match your current deal and email to them after you get the property under contract. If you cannot raise the funding in the available time, then you can exercise your financing contingency clause to escape the deal. You have no risk. This has been Quick Mortgaging Out Video Tutorial Number 1. My name is Jeffrey Smith. Thank you for your support.